Last but not least, we're going to classify the skeletal muscle fibers depending on how they manufacture their energy, the ATP, and how quick they contract. According to this, these two parameters, we have two types of skeletal muscle fibers. They can be oxidative fibers, meaning that they can oxidize um, um, oxygen. They can use oxygen to produce ATP. This occurs at the level of the mitochondria in the presence of oxygen. And the second type are glycolytic fibers. These fibers work anaerobically. Aerobically, meaning that they need air, oxygen in the air. Anaerobically, they do not need it. They work in the absence, or they can work in the absence of oxygen and produce this ATP without oxygen. But still, they need a fuel. What do they need? Glucose molecules. And these glucose molecules is stored in big molecules called um, macromolecules called glycogen. And it's like you place a bead of glucose and thread that necklace of a glucose necklace. Okay, and you keep putting beads and beads and beads of glucose. That chain, that necklace of glucose molecules is a glycogen molecule, macromolecule. And we can store that in the liver and in the skeletal muscles, in little vesicles that we call glycosomes, okay? So let's see, according to this, we can divide then, or we have three types of skeletal muscle fibers. The oxidative fibers can contract slowly or they contract fast. So they, we have slow and fast oxidative fibers and the glycolytic fibers are always fast. So we have the three types of um, uh, muscle fibers, skeletal muscle fibers. In red, I have the slow oxidative fibers. Some people call them type one. And type two, we have the fast fibers the fast oxidative fibers in pink and fast glycolytic fibers in white. And I put those colors in purple. See, the slow oxidative fibers, let's start describing the slow oxidative fibers. They're red. And they're red because they have a pigment that is called myoglobin. Myoglobin is and hemoglobin, the pigment of your blood, they're sisters. Or siblings, I don't know if they're a girl or a boy. They're siblings. They are part of the same family. They have both, they're both a pigment that gives the red color to the muscle, the myoglo myoglobin, myo, or the red color to the blood, hemo, hemoglobin, um, to the blood. And they have the function now to capture, to receive, to catch a uh, a specific number of oxygen um, atoms, ox oxygen molecules, okay, um, to become oxygenated. So these muscles, the slow oxidative uh, muscle fibers, they're red, and this myoglobin is, um, is the pigment, and they are red also because they receive an amount, a huge amount of capillaries. And capillaries are smaller, the smallest blood vessels that we have. So we have a rich blood supply that contributes to the red color of these uh, fibers. So where's the fuel source? Well, we have oxygen in there. Uh, oxygen provided by the uh, blood supply is flowing right in there. So that's what is... Uh, transfer to the myoglobin to start uh, uh, to being used in the aerobic processes into the muscle fiber. So that's the fuel. Oxygen, so the metabolism is aerobic. Uh, myoglobin, we said already, they have abundant uh, um, proteins of myoglobin. Mitochondria, of course, they have a lot because 
all of these processes take place on the mitochondria. This is where the oxidation occurs. Uh, glycosomes, we have a few. Glycosomes, remember, is where we store the glycogen. But we have already a lot of oxygen and myoglobin in here to make ATP. So these type of cell fibers have just a few of those glycosomes. The speed of contraction is not that fast, it's slow, like its name says, it's low oxidative. Uh, the speed of contraction is slow, but they're very res they're extremely resistant to fatigue. As long as we have a proper um, irrigation, a proper blood supply to this muscle, a proper um, an adequate supply of oxygen to this type of muscle fibers, we are going to have muscle contraction. This is slowly, it's not that powerful because these muscles, muscle fibers are very thin, but they're gonna last a long time, a long time. So the examples of muscles that have a big concentration or a big amount of these type of fibers are the postural muscles, the muscles of our lower back, the muscles of our back in general, that keep up our posture. They, they are not powerful muscles, but they work 24 7 to keep our posture erect. Uh, in the other end of the spectrum, we have the fast glycolytic fibers. And these fibers are pale. Now I want you to picture a chicken, a delicious chicken. And we have the dark meat and the white meat. The dark meat are... Uh, mainly slow oxida oxidative fibers and the white meat is the one that we're going to describe now are fast glycolytic fibers so these fibers are pale like the breast of the chicken is uh, they're pale because they don't have too many blood uh, capillaries uh, providing blood supply to these fibers uh, they do not rely in oxygen because they don't have a lot of uh, blood supply so they have a little bit of oxygen. They need to count on other uh, mechanisms, other ways to obtain ATP anaerobically without oxygen and using the, uh, or breaking down the glycogen molecule to obtain glucose. Um, mitochondria, a few mitochondria, we don't need it because there's a poor blood supply in there but we have a lot of these glycosomes containing the glycogen molecules. So the speed of contraction here is faster, way faster, two, three, four times faster than slow oxida oxidative fibers. Why? Because the glycogen is already there. We don't need to go through the oxidation, oxidative processes in the mitochondria. We just need to grab the glycogen and um, produce ATP to power the muscle contraction but we can run out of these glycogen or glycosomes containing glycogen really fast. When they run out, that's it, we cannot power more muscle contraction using these fibers. So these are muscle fibers that contract fast, but they tire quickly, as quickly as we run out of the glycosomes on that fiber. They're very thick. They contain more myofilament, Per uh, in the myer in the muscle fiber contains more myofilaments than the slow oxidative fiber, so they are much uh, powerful muscle fibers. These muscles are in the human are usually located on the upper limbs. Now I should not say that the muscles of the upper limb contain a bigger proportion of fast glycolytic fibers than all other muscles. Why do I say this? Unlike the chicken, that we have the dark meat and the white meat, on the human, every muscle has the three types of fibers. What it changes is the concentration, and we can vary, we can change, we can manipulate that concentration through training, exercise. Uh, one type of fibers, fast oxidative fibers, can be converted with training, with weight training, into fast glycolytic fibers and they can go back to, uh, to being fast oxidative fibers. We'll discuss that um, in class. 
Now, the last type of muscle fiber that we have, skeletal muscle fiber that we have, are the fast oxidative fibers. And they're right in the middle, and there is a mix of red and white, so they're pink. They're pinkish because they, they're oxidative, so they have a lot of myoglobin, of capillaries, they mostly are aerobic, they have a lot of myoglobin and mitochondria, but still, they, there's a mixture between the two types. In here, we have a few glycosomes, but more than these low oxidative fibers. So we can use that, um, that type of metabolism as well. Um, the speed of contraction is right in the middle between slow oxidative and fast glycolytic, as well as the, uh, res the fatigue resistance and the diameter. They're both in, you know, all the characteristics are intermediate between slow oxidative and fast glycolytic. And the examples of these are the muscles of the lower limbs. So in class discussions, we are going to apply this knowledge to um, discuss some clinical situations. So see you in the next chapter, chapter 11, muscles of the body.